what city will you never visit based on its reputation? Egyptians, here we go again. Mogadishu. My sister told me about this years ago. Somalia got its first tourist in 2010 and thought he was insane or lying about his reasons for being there. We have never seen people like this man, Omar Mohammed, one of the officials, told the AFP. He said he was a tourist, we couldn't believe him. But later on we found he was serious. That makes him the first person to come to Mogadishu only for tourism. Newsfeed.time.com I like how even city officials were like WTF would you come here? To be fair I got the same reaction from people in Eindhoven. Porto Prince, Haiti. I work with so many refugee families who fled from there and the stories are chilling. I went there in 2011 as a nursing student to help out at one of the hospitals. Great friendly people, but the state of pretty much everything was absolutely shocking. Everything was in disrepair, tons of buildings were still complete rubble from the earthquake in 2010, raw sewage appeared to be flowing out onto some of the streets, no traffic lights worked, potholes were so large they'd swallow your entire vehicle, etc. Our fun time consisted of going to the UN base. There were also frequent power outages throughout the day. The entire hospital was surrounded by concrete walls that were probably 7 to 8 feet high followed by barbed wire that was another 5 feet high and was manned by men with guns. We were not allowed to go out into the streets, ever. Some of the cases coming through there were absolutely heartbreaking, X a baby died after another hospital had given it so much cough cold meds it stopped breathing. We were also told that some of the other local hospitals did not have staff at night time and patients were left alone by themselves. I learned a lot and met some fantastic people though. It made me realize how good we have it in Canada. From current reports, those are the good old days. Things are much worse now. The government has almost completely failed and is begging for outside intervention. Rival gangs are engaging in warfare on the streets, gunfire and burning houses of rivals. Cholera outbreaks are even more out of control. Hospitals have no medicine or power. One report I saw, Black market fuel smugglers got stopped by the police and had fuel taken because it's the only way they could get gas because the government is so broken that it can't get gas into the city. Something like 70% of Haitians have insufficient food and are regularly not eating for days at a time. I forget the UN technical designation, but food conditions are one step below outright famine. Can strongly recommend Indigo Travelers reports from Haiti. U2.B Some comments I won't go to Mogadishu because I don't want to be skinned alive other comments. I won't go to Cape Cod because I hear the crab cakes aren't what they used to be. I don't go to Mogadishu because their crab cakes are honestly too good. It's the skin. Dubai not a fan of 120 degrees with nearly 100% humidity. There's a town way north of Perth where I live in Western Australia called Wittenoom, that I would refuse to step foot anywhere near purely because of the history of it and the asbestos exposure risks. I have no idea how there are still people living there, let alone the hundreds of tourists that go through there on their travels in the north. Edit, nice to know that the last people living there are now gone. No one has lived there since September and the government is planning on demolishing it. Last I'd heard there was one holdout who wouldn't sell her home. Per Wikipedia it's completely unoccupied now. It actually was declared unsafe in 2007 and they removed its town status in 2013 and started limiting access then. Cairo. Apparently one of the worst places in the world to go if you're a tourist. At least, if people on Reddit I've seen complaining are to be believed. I worked somewhat near Egypt and had a number of co-workers, we are all males and military contractors, who visited there thinking it was just a stigma about the harassing. Every single one of them said they would never go back and a number mentioned how you would have to be insane to visit as a woman. In high school I had a friend whose mom had met an Egyptian man online. After we had graduated a few months later, my friend's mom moved, from Texas, to Egypt to marry and live with this man, having never met him in person before. Nobody has heard from her since then it even my friend whose mom it was. Edit, I graduated in 2010, so this was about 12 years ago. 12 years and nobody has heard from her. We had a family member, older woman, do the same thing. Got off the plane in Cairo, met the guy, who immediately asked her for her money so he could put it away safely for her. He took her to an apartment where she was locked in for a few days before she was able to get out. Of course she never saw the guy again. Found her way to an embassy eventually and they sent her home. Wow, 
That sounds like a really good outcome for her honestly. That is literally probably the best possible outcome in that situation, him just taking her money and leaving. There are a lot worse things that could have happened to her. Port-au-Prince not being murdered is my favorite thing. I was actually in Haiti back in July. The people were amazing but goddamn does that country have its demons. I say the same. The people are warm and welcoming in their poor state. I responded to Port-au-Prince in January of 2010 for relief work after the earthquake. We were searching for injured persons in a shantyville close to the harbor. We had armed peacekeeping personnel from the UN along. There were gangs roaming the area, armed with AK-47s, guys that had been freed from a prison north of the airport. There was tension in the air, Haiti has its demons, that is a fact. Tip, sort by controversial to find your city. You lied to me. I couldn't find Helsinki anywhere. I choose Helsinki. Pyongyang. If I went, I couldn't complain. Mogadishu. One friend was murdered and his murderer set free by his clan. Another colleague was kidnapped from their guest house five years ago now and is still missing. We'll never, ever, step one tiny toe in that city let alone the country of Somalia. What line of work are you in that you know not one, but two people who went to Mogadishu? Not up but I know accountants, no joke, that were sent there to audit oil subsidiaries of some big publicly traded oil companies. Supposedly came with multiple security guards around them 247 and an armored vehicle to and from location. I know someone who works for a private security contractor. Basically he's a mercenary, like Blackwater. I asked him a while back, what's the worst place you have ever been to and he immediately said Somalia. The guy has worked in the Middle East and all over Africa and he said the only place he refuses to ever go back to is Somalia. Kingston, Jamaica. The saying goes if you don't have business in Kingston, you have no business in Kingston. Edit, I have traveled to other parts of Jamaica and the island is sincerely one of the most beautiful places on earth. I went to Kingston on a cruise once, and tried wandering off from the shopping district the cruise bus took us to so I could see the real Kingston. I got like one block away and the shopkeeper came out and physically restrained me from going any further, saying you better get back to your tour, you go any further and they're gonna chop you up. My desire to see the real Kingston evaporated immediately after that. Born in Kingston and lived there for a majority of my life. I was 17 at the time just got my car, fast forward, I stopped at a red light and got into the crossfire of a shootout one bullet moving directly above my head safe to say I moved after that. Gallup, New Mexico according to truck drivers. Story time. I live in Albuquerque and I played rugby in high school. We went to Gallup to play exactly one time. We had to walk the field to pick out glass and needles out of the dirt. It was awful. I too live in ABQ and when in marching band had to pick glass and needles in Gallup up. All of Qatar. Probably Riften. Too many sketchy people. They also have the Thieves Guild to worry about, not to mention Maven Blackbriar. Gary, Indiana. Forks, wah. Places full of emo vampires and werewolves. Any remaining sundown towns. Guadalajara, Mexico. I work for a large software dev. Company that has a delivery center in Guadalajara. We've had to go as far as employing private security services to establish a safe zone for employees due to kidnapping attempts and general random violent incidents. Edit, thank you all for the upvotes, this was unexpected. I just wanted to thank everyone who has contributed their positive experiences with Guadalajara. I would also like to clarify that I am not trying to discourage people from going to visit. The issues that have led me to not wanting to go to Guadalajara can definitely be mitigated to some degree by tourists and travelers with street smarts, good planning, and good awareness of their surroundings. That being said, the business environment struggles to do this somewhat. In international orgs that have hundreds of offices and multiple large delivery centers all over the world, the demand for 247 work from office availability to combat time zone differences, dictates how employees have to interact with their environment. This increases potential threat surfaces in a significant way. We also are unfortunately actively targeted by criminal organizations, which creates challenges more unique than just petty crime when you have criminal entities with so much power.